Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Trek Yards. He is Commander Cockins. Yeah, it's always a, a pleasure to play a guessing game. Will he say Kapla at the start of a Klingon episode or not? Because it's 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 it does happen a lot, but this time not so much. Okay. I can't do it for everyone. No, you can't. Everyone lost the bet there, I think. Because I was waiting for it, I'll be honest. Sorry, hello. Oh, God of Kings. Hey, guys. <laughs> I already said it. I already introduced you. I was so focused on you not saying Kapla. I really excuse And he's Captain Foley. We're taking a look back at the Prodigy episode Kobayashi, where we run into three, well, probably more, actually, um, Klingon birds of prey. So we're going to take a look at them. This was a jam-packed episode. You've seen our full content. So much good stuff. And we always love seeing ships. And theoretically, arguably, maybe this... Well, it's kind of... It's kind of it, yeah, it's our first test, actually, isn't it? To how close they can make ship models. We saw the exterior of the Bird of Prey in a previous episode, and it was very close, but it was crashed and destroyed, so it doesn't have to be the most close. We saw the insides of Bird of Prey bridging in very, very close. The Gats class missed a few little things, but, yeah, who knows? Might be different. Like a unique version they went off. Whatever. So this is our first ship, and we're going to judge ships from now on. So what did you think when it appeared, or they appeared? Well, and obviously the first picture shows that moment. What was the uh, reaction? I was excited to see them, obviously. I wish they would have been, like, a bird of prey and maybe two katingas or something. But, but honestly, they, they looked a little bit slender to me, a little bit squished. But it could just be because they're the bigger cavort models as opposed to the Burrell. Right? We'll, we'll talk about that, I'm sure. So They look a little bit sleeker. Because in my brain, I'm thinking, well, we know the shoulder blades go above, but they aren't. And you know they do. <laughs> That's one of the big things about them. There's, there's, no, there's no depth there. It may be the angle, but I really don't think it's the angle. And we kind of only get sort of one give or take view the entire episode. So, But I think I mean, the color-wise, they look great. Vibe-wise, they capture it. Already, I can see one detail that isn't right. But let's just go straight into the comparison, though. This render is a comparison with the Canon official... DS9 CGI model used, so every time you see it in CGI and DS9, which is often, this is the model, based on the miniature, obviously they're limited detail at time because it's a 90s model, but it is the official and they always try to get as close as possible. And we have compared to the lower decks version, which was extremely accurate to the point of little nernies that are accurate. Here's a direct comparison. I couldn't quite match the angle, but I think with the stoutness, there's a reason for that. You know, getting the guns and the head to match up, kind of tricky. But here is them side by side. I would not have realised this until you see them side by side. Yeah. <laughs> is that a bird well, of prey or is that something different? I don't know. It's a new bird of prey. It's a next generation bird of prey. I don't know. It did get rid of the uh, <clears throat> the cloaking ring. <laughs> Which is the thing I noticed. There aren't windows there. Bird of yeah, prey just, people, there aren't windows there. Just so you guys know, that red ring around the front of the bird of prey, not the one around the torpedo launcher, that's the deflector, but the other one is... The cloaking ring and yeah they've removed it here and put windows there which is fine because if it is a newer version of the bird of prey it could be the cloaking ring or the cloaking device is somewhere else but obviously katingas and, and vultures don't have cloaking wings now there's the caveat that obviously this bird of prey is designed for star trek 3 so it's designed to be tmp the miniature was then reused all the way until tng without any changes that's the kind of the joke about it and then replicating cgi so it did not change except in sizing, for 150 years. This version, though, the Kobayashi Maru is a TNG Kobayashi Maru test, in theory, although it's still using the TMP audio, so that might just be a pick a ship, who knows. So, is it trying to be a... Because it's not the same design, you can see there has distinct differences that you don't notice. Is it trying to be sort of the TNG Bird of Prey, or is it kind of the, the more warship version, make it distinctly different, because we know this is a scout version normally, because it isn't the same, I mean... You know, zooming in, that is a different design. Well, my thinking, and I think a lot of people would agree that this version is the Cavort, which is the larger bird of prey, because you're going up against the Galaxy class, and three Burrells against the Galaxy would be like, doop, 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 done. Well, except in <laughs> Generations, where? <clears throat> well, bad, yeah, but... So you think this might be sort of a, 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 a gentle retcon? Because I'm looking at the wings, and you can literally see very, very clearly that they go flat and then down. Because those two little dots are on the, they're on the main wing. No, they're not here. They're on the side thing. That's completely different angle. That's completely different. Wow. That's one of the reasons it looks so different, actually. Now that you pointed that out, it's it's, it's really weird to see a side by side or a front by front. Because yeah, something looked off on on them in the the show, and I couldn't place it. Like I said, they looked just more squat. However, um, yeah, there's quite a few little differences. The main body is bulked out, the secondary hull. 
Um, as it feels that way. I, th- I think it's because they've removed the shoulder blades entirely. So they've just pushed this hull in. Because if you look at it, rather than... Like, there's just two... I mean, it's really really hard to see because of the lighting. But on the right-hand side, you see the two... What would be the... Because the, the shoulder blades are actually two pieces that slide. That's the whole point. They're interwoven yeah. blades. The Whereas here, they just look like two chunks of metal. And based on how the wing is, it looks like it just is in the hull. So I would assume these things can't move their wings, which would be cavort ish and if you move the blades then you can push the hull out which clearly has happened because the greeblies don't match they don't match even the front of the hull does not match i mean this is a really different ship actually that would make a lot of sense actually if if it is a larger version yeah chances are it doesn't have the very variable wing, geometry yeah. wing you know so <clears throat> and yeah you could get more internal volume that way because you wouldn't have to worry about the mechanism for the but still not change the design just change the design yeah, I mean, <laughs> we've talked about that a bit. We did a uh, Trekyard's Legends on the Bird of Prey, um, and FASA had three different sizes for the Bird of Prey. Um, so yeah, there's it's kind of got a weird history. Um, so it could, it could be anything, honestly, but I think they are the larger ones, which would make sense going up against Galaxy Class. So Yeah, I mean, the thing doesn't... I mean, not, that's not to say that the Galaxy couldn't defeat them. They didn't even fire weapons, really. So a spade battle is not what they were going for that match. But yeah, I mean, Kavor are... Although they said that they're not... You know, still fixed wing attack position ships, but now I. But unlike Discovery, say or Picard, where you know Picard like gets the when they show the Enterprise D, they get the shuttle bay. Our shuttle bay is wrong. They just mirror the model. They haven't paid enough attention. That's clearly they haven't paid enough attention. This to me feels like a, such a deliberate update, v- variant more, where there's like let's just make it make the bigger version that was never was. Because then the window size kind of makes sense. Then if those are a one size window, well now she's many decks, which fits the Cavour. No, not exactly, but certainly a bigger ship. Maybe whoever was well, I mean, the writers may have said, "Well, we don't, we don't, we don't think three scouts are enough. Let's make a better variant that will cope." And no one's gonna notice. We we should point out for the audience that might not know, but a standard Burrell, like a bird of prey, is a dozen officers and men, so it's only twelve crew, which is not big. It is not a big ship. It's like so, 105 or so, I think it's like 105, 120 meters. It's, it's very, very small. Yeah. And that, like, head part, the main top part is just the bridge. Like, there's not much going on there. Here we got, as you can see, it looks like two decks of windows. So, yeah, I mean, that makes perfect sense. And I have no problem with that. I mean, at first glance, to most people, these look perfect. Um, something looked a little off for me. I couldn't place it. But now, obviously, seeing this, it's very, very obvious. Um it- it just feels like a more compact, sleeker... Because you can... The way we talked about how the shoulder blades are gone, you look at the where the, the, the shoulder blade slits connect to the top bumps. Well, in the new version, they're completely to that point. So you can see they've literally pushed, pulled that out. And in fact, that might, li- they might literally stretched it. I wonder if they built it and just stretched it. No. This wouldn't be a hard one to kit bash, actually. Uh, the amount of changes is, is you can sort of pinpoint them mostly. No, it's interesting, and it does have a different feel. I kind of wish we see this again, but I'm not against this being, in, you know, this isn't the bird of prey, it's a bird of prey. And I think I'll give them the benefit of the doubt for being deliberate. It can't be I'm non-deliberate. It's too different. One little thing, though, I want to point out that it is a rendering error they did, which is fun because we you know, looked here. So in the battle, I mean, we pretty much only see them from the bridge, uh, only from the view screen in one angle, give or take. And always find torpedoes, whatever. In one particular scene, if you cut to the next view, these two shots are about three frames later. They're not in the attack wing position. They're in the flight f- cruise configuration with the wings straight out. Oh, my God. So between between the light of a torpedo hit and the quick camera cut, they very, for like two or three frames become... So that is a either the, the articulation of the wings, there's like a keyframe and it swapped back to its standard, or this is like from an older take. But they literally have a render error of it changing configuration for about five frames as a, as a, uh, in the scene while it's wow. light. Wow. Full just on having the mo- Just having the model be able to do that implies that like that was, you know, something they maybe intended to use or will use in the future because <laughs> why would you why would you make a model that could do that? Wow. That's a good catch, man. Well, it was like, the hell? That's a, that's a glitch. Because it's a glitch in the Matrix. It literally was an incorrect frame. But if you notice, double down, because they've now changed how the shoulder blades work, it only moves at the connection point to the, yeah, the second the so point. It, the pivot point, it doesn't 
don't know if it necessarily makes sense, but it would look very different pivoting. It's just the wings. So I'm wondering if they originally had it as the Cavort, because that's how they designed the ship. And then someone said, no, we want it classic configuration. But they're like, oh, but we want to use the bigger ships. They're like, yeah, we want the classic. And so they just took the pivot and then moved. They couldn't, there was no shoulder blades anymore. So they just moved the, the arm points down and kind of filled in the geometry. But they left that. They actually have like take seven in along with take eight, the final. Well, wasn't there in DS9 or is it TNG where we see? No, oh, it would be DS9. We see the mirror universe. We see the the big cavort. Because I think the cavorts had more of a more of a flat mm -hmm. appearance oh, yeah. anyway. Mm -hmm. No, it, it would be a perfect cavort. I think I've changed it. So yeah. So guys, for the Blu-ray. <laughs> fix that frame because it literally is a red error uh, so yeah just wanna... wow. dude that's awesome that you caught that I mean I I've watched this a few times now and I didn't notice that it's a very f f fast on screen screen I bet and it's during a torpedo it literally is like three frames but once you click yeah go back and see if you can pick it up now do you prefer it would this have looked cooler if this had been what we'd seen the whole time in Cavort configuration uh, yes I really like that configuration. I prefer it over the attack configuration of the bird of prey. You know that. I also like the the, the wings up with the landing configuration. Also, that looks we've cool. never seen again, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. But no, the straight out. I really like that look. You know, you know, it should have been maybe. It should have been the middle one was wings up or straight, and the back two down and clearly smaller. Yes. That yep. would have been a cool way of saying it's like. And fans would be like, "What's that?" And it's like, "What? Two variants of the bird of prey." It's like, "What?" That yeah, cool. that would have worked. Yeah. Cool. Well, so, yeah. We caught a lot there, Stuart, and it's not. It's a wholly bird of prey variant. So, Eagle Moss, get on it, because this ain't, this ain't a Burrell. I'm telling you now, it is not a Burrell. Well, guys, did you notice this? Because I sure as hell didn't. Um, so, put in the comments down below what you thought about this bird of prey and this one particular frame that I'm staring at right now, which is now like very mesmerizing. Awesome catch, Samuel. Good job. Um, comment down below what you think about it. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to click the notification bell icon to know when to join us for all of the um, fun lives and things that we... Where you can decloak and watch our content. Is it decloaks earlier while being released? Because, you know, everyone's got cloaks these days. Because in Discovery Season 4, everyone's got cloaks. And... Anyway, or support us directly in our analysis of all of our things we do on the old tracks, the new tracks, the breaking news, etc., etc. Help us financially if you can directly, because without that support, we cannot keep going. You can do via Patreon, via PayPal, which is one time. Join the channel via YouTube or Super Chatting during the lives. It's kind of like a PayPal, which is a direct one time, but it's fun. You can put a comment in, you get direct communication, and you can often help steer a whole conversation while we're live to whatever the hell you want. That's the fun of it. You can steer it whatever direction you yeah, want. Pretty much. Yeah. So anyway, guys, until next time, mm -hmm. I'm going to say I'm Captain Foley because otherwise no one will know who the hell I am because nobody introduces me. And I am Commander Coggins and end with a Kapla, Stuart. Kapla? Oh, yeah, that's Mary Universe. Kapla. Bye, guys. Bye.